Uh, today we're going to be learning about photosynthesis and cellular respiration. We know it has to do with energy. We know it has uh, photosynthesis has to do with sunlight, water, you know, and carbon dioxide and making glucose and oxygen or other carbohydrates. So let's take a look at that process. We first need to know what ATP is. So what is ATP? ATP is called adenosine triphosphate. Adenosine triphosphate. Again, it has these three parts. It has an adenine group, which is made up of nitrogen parts. It has a ribose sugar, and we've learned about other sugars like glucose, fructose, galactose. Well, here's another one called ribose, which is very important, actually, in RNA, and uh, especially here in making ATP. And we have three phosphate groups that have a lot of energy, and the more phosphates there are, the more energetic this molecule becomes. So how do we explain it? Well, the way I explain it is like a battery. So ADP is like a medium charged battery. It has energy, but not that much. So again, ADP is adenosine di, which means two. Adenosine diphosphate, it has two phosphates, and it has some energy, like this flashlight can light, but not that much. But by adding another phosphate, look what happens. We make this, um, molecule very energetic now becomes ATP by adding that phosphate so adenosine triphosphate three phosphate groups and now look how much energy it has it can do a lot of work it can light up your room now so think of ATP as a battery um, you add another phosphate to make it ATP and it becomes very energetic kind of how we made these popsicle stick models remember that what the more uh, popsicle sticks or the more phosphates that we added the more unstable or energetic this molecule became. And we felt that energy being stored in the bonds because it was really hard to make these. And I think some students didn't get to make this because that's how hard it was, right? But it has a lot of energy. So that's ATP. All right, so now that we get that, let's talk about this diagram. And here we're in class. And in class, for, before you do anything, first uh, draw this out if you don't have it already. It's a very important diagram for tests and that you're going to see later on. Okay, so what do we have here? We have photosynthesis on the left, cellular respiration on the right side. Let's break down photosynthesis and what it means first. So photo means light, which means to combine. Okay, we're going to use light to combine two things, water and oxygen to make glucose. So here we're creating glucose, which is a carbohydrate. It's made up of carbon and water and uh, carbohydrate and carbon dioxide and water combined to make Glucose. Okay, so what we have here is this uh, glucose, and once we make it, we can also make turn it into other things like proteins, lipids, carbohydrates, and nucleic acids based on what the plant needs. Okay, so over here in cellular respiration, look at the word respiración, respiration, which means to breathe in oxygen and to breathe out carbon dioxide. So what we're going to do is we're going to break down glucose, and with the help of oxygen, of course, glucose is split in half, and then it's broken down even more. And we release energy and store it into ATP. That's the whole point of breaking, breaking down glucose. It has a lot of energy waiting to be released. And in other molecules as well, you're going to break it down. Uh, you could be breaking down not just glucose, but lipids, um, proteins, other carbohydrates, even nucleic acids. You can break them down for energy if you need. Okay, so now let's go into our, our drawing. Um, who does photosynthesis. Well, we have plants, algae, and some bacteria. So remember those three types. It's not just plants. Other creatures do it as well. Who does cellular respiration? Well, all organisms, even plants. We all need to break down um, glucose or other food molecules. So we start with a diagram here. We have sunlight. Now the sun energy is unusable. Um, it can give you a nice tan. It can help your skin make vitamin D um, and can even cheer you up or give you some you know heat energy but it doesn't do anything more than that it doesn't give you direct food energy or chemical energy so how do you recharge and how do you get that energy to make you do work and to do things well you gotta get it from a food molecule which is something that eventually a plant created anyway so let's go to the left side so here we have sunlight and plants can take this unusable sunlight energy and use it to combine water, which is taken up by the roots, and carbon dioxide, which is the carbon in the air. And the plants will take that and make 
glucose. Now the glucose is distributed throughout the plant or throughout the body so that other parts of the plant can get that sugar, what they need. Or a lot of it is put into fruits, as we all know, it tastes, it's very tasty there. And now it's there, okay, it's all over the body. And then it also makes oxygen by accident, as you'll see later. And so oxygen is made, and how does that relate to us? Well, we breathe in that oxygen. We eat that glucose, and then we take it into our bodies. It gets broken down by our di digestive system, gets taken into the blood, delivered to our cells, and then enters the mitochondria where oxygen breaks your glucose down into three things. You know, water, carbon dioxide, and ATP. So this guy's not getting electrocuted. It just means that he's getting energy, ATP form. Now let's go a little more into this diagram, which is our chloroplast. This is where it happens. You have uh, sunlight hitting right here, The um, which you'll find out later. These are thylakoids, and there's chlorophyll in there, and that's what traps the sunlight energy. You also have water coming in and carbon dioxide. These are the three ingredients. They come in, and we, again, turn carbon dioxide into glucose. There goes our glucose molecule. We also get oxygen. And so if you put that into equation, remember everything on the left is what's going in. Everything on the right is what's going out. So what's going in here? Well, you're getting light, water, and carbon dioxide. Those are the three. And you turn it into glucose. And also you get oxygen. And then on the other side is, well, look at what just came out here is what actually goes in here. You get glucose and oxygen going into the mitochondria. And glucose is broken down with the help of oxygen. And what do you get? Water, carbon dioxide, and ATP. So you put that here is the same thing. Again, oxygen, glucose coming in. So oxygen plus glucose gives us water, carbon dioxide, and ATP. There you go. So now you have ATP. And remember why this was important? Because it has that third phosphate, and now it has so much energy that it can drive our chemical reactions in the body and allow us to do things.